Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour YouTube watching hundreds of poker vlogger hands to bring you 10 of the best. And I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later, but in this week's episode, not only do we feature three players multiple times, but we seem to be at the Hustler Casino in California an awful lot. These were our 10 of the best, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's get started. Coming in at number 10 this week, it's Brad Owen, playing in the biggest game of his career, $100, $200 blinds at the Lodge in Austin. And sure, we're all doing this in our local 1-2 game, but in a $12,000 pot? Here, there's a $400 straddle on. Nick just limps in with the ace-queen offsuit and the hijack. He's a recreational player. He deserves a ton of credit for having the guts to even join us at the lodge for these stakes since some people, pros even, won't play poker in Texas. They can't handle the swings. I like Nick, but I'm happy to try and isolate him in position with King-10 suited. I raised a 2,000. The big blind wakes up with ace-king offsuit, and this is when things get very interesting. Brad is going to probably get three bet, and I would imagine he... Depending on the sizing, guys, he might defend with King-10 suited. But Chinese gamblers played so close to the vest the whole night that maybe, maybe you even fold this hand. What is he going to make this? 5.5? Well, he's got a limp in there. I think he's going to make it like 7,000 at least. Maybe 8 from out of position. 4x, something like that. We'll see. Yeah, 7,000. And that's probably just a hair too small to fold King-10 suited. I think Nick can just limp fold now. Unless he's thinking about doing something crazy, you know? Yeah, he's just going to fold the ace-queen. And now Brad's getting about 2-1 to one in position with the suited Broadway, and he's going to continue. So here we go. We've got a $15,000 pot against a guy who's been playing snug today. However, he was set up well in this situation to go for a light 3-bet. I played with the same player the night before on stream. This is a flashback to that session in which he 3-bet squeezed with a small suited ace in a similar scenario. Back to this hand, we're heads up in position. The flop comes queen 7 6 rainbow with one club. We have one over and some strong backdoor draws. Any card above the 7 that doesn't pair the board is going to give us at least a gutter. Clubs are live as well. Plus, this flop is good for my range. I'll realistically have all the sets, even top set, and I can have 7 6 suited for 2 pair. I wouldn't expect the big blind to have any of those hands very often except a set of queens. Pretty frequently, he'll just have ace high, whether it's ace king like he has here, or a small suited ace like he had in the previous clip that I showed you. The opponent doesn't want to quit on this yet, he down bets to 5,000. My sense is that he has me beat but is weak, I could fly out to peel one off since I'm getting a good price and I'm in position. I figure I'm likely going to have to bluff at this at some point to take it down though, might as well try it here when I have maximum leverage. The raise looks much stronger than if I call this bet. The opponent checks the turn and I fire at that point. There's almost no shot that I'll get re-raised even if my opponent has a set of queens, so if I raise here and get called, I could potentially even check back the turn and see a river card for free if I want, or I can continue with the heat if I feel like it. Either way, I'll have control of the pot. I go with the option that allows me to win on this street. I raised to 13,000. The stream doesn't really capture it on camera though. Not only will all these high hands have to fold, but hands like jacks and tens and nines are going to hate facing this aggression as well. There's no sweat. The opponent folds right away. We get the biggest pure bluff that I've ever attempted through immediately to profit over 12,000 on the hand. Did he believe he raised? He raised it. And Brad Owen making plays. Wow, that is definitely something that I was not expecting. He raises Chinese gambler's seabed and raced to 13k yeah, nice and move. took it down. Nice move there by Brad. And that guy just snapped these king like it was nothing. In at number nine is Doug McCusker, playing at the Capitol in Sacramento, California. He's in a 1-3 game, and this hand, well, it just gets better and better and better. New day, new table, new seat, same old card. So I got 7-8 suited, open for a raise to 15. End up getting a caller on my left, and the next player puts in the call, and a couple players out back put in a call. So we end up going five ways to this flop with $78 in the pot. Now, I haven't hit one of these real hard in a very long time. Hoping to do so here, and that's what we get. We get king nine six with two hearts. So open end straight draw, flush draw, very disguised hand, multi-way action. I'm gonna continue for $40. Trying to build a pot in case I hit it. Next player puts in the call. Following player puts in the call. Other players 
they look at their hands for a while and said, hey, yeah, that's a pretty nice looking pot out there. Let's put in $40. So this thing's really growing. It comes up to $278. And the dealer is going to put out a, a turn card. And we're really hoping and praying that we hit something because it's been a long, cold streak. And we get the beautiful five of clubs on the turn. So we make the nuts and we have a redraw. What more can you ask for? Well, you can ask for some action. So I decided to bet $150, which is a little over half pot. And I'm thinking that if someone had two pair, a big king, maybe a flush draw or some sort of combo draw with like Jack 10 or Queen 10 of hearts, they'll be coming along. First player thinks for a little bit and ends up folding. I um, was hoping to get a call out of one person, but it looks like that's not going to be the case because the next player to act decides that he is not going to call my bet. He is going to put in a raise, and he makes it $400 to go. Now, this is a player who watches the blog and is on the conservative side of the spectrum and has owned me for the last two weeks. Every time I got involved with him, he ends up taking my money. So I'm thinking I'm in pretty good shape here. He either has a set or he has the same hand I do. And since I have the redraw, I'm happy to get all my chips in. So I jam. He puts in the quick call. I tell him I had the seven, eight of hearts and I roll it over. And the river card comes as a five of hearts. So it pairs the board, but we make the flush. He slowly rolls over seven, eight of diamonds. So he turned the nuts also. And I get there with the redraw. And number eight this week, we are playing with Frankie of the next gen boys of the Texas Card House in Dallas, Texas. He's playing in a 2 5 game. And let's be honest, sometimes you just have to get lucky. Playing 2 5 10 with pocket eights. We see an early position limp to 10. I make a big raise to $60, trying to isolate him. The straddle calls in the early position limper calls. Flop comes 3 5 king, checks to me. I probably have the best hand. I definitely want to deny equity against overcard, so I bet half pot, $90. And the straddle folds, but the only gun limper makes the call here. He might have 5x, or probably beat. Planning on slowing down on the turn, except the eight of hearts comes on the turn. We turn a huge set in a $360 pot. Checks to me, I bet $150. And things I didn't expect to happen was him to raise here to 300. Min click raise. I pretty quickly make the call. He's got 350 behind, so I think the money is getting in. I could definitely just raise it here. Jack of clubs comes on the river. He jams. I snap call, and you won't believe what he flips over. Pocket fives. What a cooler for him. Set over set in a $1,000 plus pot. I'm happy. Number seven this week, we're with Poker Face Ash at my home casino, Talking Stick Resort, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. She's playing in a 2-3 game, and I think this hand just kind of plays itself. As this hand's being dealt, there was a gentleman on the button who was very tilted. I wasn't here for it, but I guess he lost some crazy pots and he was really stuck and wanted to gamble. So while this hand was being dealt, before he saw his cards, he said, all right, who wants to gamble? Let's get some money in the pot. So I'm under the gun too and look down at pocket aces. I raise it up and make it $15. Next to act calls the same kid who beat me with the ace four offsuit. And then the button who said he wanted to gamble raises it up and he makes it $55. I'm licking my chops at this point and I also see the small blind call the 55 and the big blind also calls the 55. So now there is over $150 of dead money in the pot and I have the goods. At the time, with effective stacks and the dead money in the middle with multiple callers, I didn't see any other raise size that made sense here besides an all-in, as I can also do this with my ace-king offsuit hands and also my suited ace-king. So at the time, I thought shoving here definitely gives me some non-nutted hands. I don't just have to have aces or kings to make this play. Folds to the button and he agonizes for a while and finally says, all right, I call. The other two fold, so now we're going heads up for over a thousand dollar pot, and I'm not sure what I want to see on the flop, but the flop comes queen high, and immediately I see my opponent about to roll over his cards, and I know what I'm about to look at. He has pocket queens, and we get sucked out on for a thousand dollar pot, and in our first two hands here, we get felted. At number six this week, it's our boy Ethan, Rampage Poker. 
playing at the Hustler in California. He's in a big $5,100 game, and this really could have gone horribly wrong. In the very next hand, there's an under the gun open to $700. We're playing five-handed here at this spot. There are two players who make the call to me, and I'm not going anywhere with pocket threes. Let's try to hit a set and just stack everyone, right? Well, in the flop comes 744 rainbow. This actually isn't the worst flop in the world for threes, and action checks the under the gun player who decides to bet out $2,000. The rest of the players fold to me, and with the pair on this board, I certainly can't fold in... I'm starting to think of some cards that I can see on the turn to potentially turn my hand into a bluff. So I make the call for 2000 and when the turn comes in eight, now five, six gets there, which is a hand that I certainly can have a lot more than this player. I start with a check and he bets out 4,500. Well, okay, 4,500 is a chunky one and I don't think I can call here and confidently say I think pocket threes would be good. So instead, I decided to think about check raising. And when I raise, I put a lot of the 7x or 8x into a pretty bad spot. Don't think those hands can withstand much pressure. So I decided to check raise and amp up the pressure to 16,000. This player goes deep into the tank and thinks for a while. And ultimately, he ends up on a decision, which is the fold button. I didn't expect him to have pocket tens here and fold such a strong hand, but certainly was going to fire again on the river. Didn't need to come to that at this point, and I'll take it down with the bluff getting through. At number five, we're staying with Ethan. He's still at the Hustler, but this time in a 25-50 game. And I guess poker's always easier when you can see your opponent's cards, huh? For basically the last hand of this stream, I am stuck a pile. So I decided to actually straddle to $300 in this hand. I think the graphics got it wrong thinking I raised, but this is just a pure straddle and gamble. So action starts when Jeremy raises to $1,000. There's one caller in position and folds around to me. I look down at King 7 of clubs and they're suited on the straddle. Let's just see a flop for $700 more. So I've got a big pot brewing here with my big straddle. The flop comes King 8 3 rainbow. Finally, got top pair and thinking I'll actually win a hand to end the stream. I check it over to Jeremy and he continues for 1000 The other player folds and I have an easy decision to make. Nothing makes sense other than just a call for 1000 We're off to see a turn, which is the four of diamonds. Don't think this changes a whole lot just yet. And I check once again, hoping to see Jeremy bets or maybe check too because I have a weak top pair. Anyways, he decides to elect on a bet and sizes to 3,000. Once again, I'm not going anywhere. Certainly starting to feel a little cautious and wary of maybe being up against a better king. But for now, look, not going to be folding on the turn just yet. I make the call and hopefully win a good sized pot. And the river comes the seven. Bink City for me. I have two pair now and thinking that I am very much ahead. Certainly could cooler, good hands like King Queen, Ace Queen, King Jack, hands that I can get a lot of value from. And I decided to check again, hoping that he'll value bet a good king or just bluff with his air. And he does. He does one of those two options. He decides to fire out $8,850. A pretty chunky bet here on the river. And he's also playing with about 14000 behind. And here, all I'm thinking is that I am going to scoop this pot up, go all in, hopefully get called by a worse king. And that's how the story is going to go, right? So I decide to go all in as I don't think I have any other decision to make. And he snaps. And he has five, six of hearts. And I lose because it turns out the river was a huge bink for Jeremy instead Binks the nut straight and ship a $55,000 pot to him to end the stream. This was quite the night full of pain. And at number four this week, we're sticking with the hustler up there in California, but we're changing the player. This time it's Mariano and he's playing in the 2550 game. And let's be honest, how many of you are betting the river? Action folds around to me on the button, and I look down at pocket twos. The straddle is on, so I raise to 300, and then the small blind makes it 1500. It gets back to me, and with a pocket pair, I'm not going anywhere just yet. Heads up to a flop of queen, queen three. The small blind continues with a small bet, and I make the call. The turn is a four, and now he bets $2,000. 
Well, we could certainly be losing to a queen or a bigger pocket pair, but we're also beating hands like ace-king or any other Broadway cards that didn't connect. So I make the call once again and find a terrible river, the four of diamonds counterfeiting my hand. However, the small blind decides to finally check, and now we have an opportunity to win the pot. If I had anything strong on this board, like a full house or big pocket pair, I would obviously bet, so I think doing the same thing when I have nothing is a reasonable play. Let's see what happens. Crazy. Crazy thing, yeah. Marty, I was trying to rep a hand like pocket eight. He's telling a pretty good story here. He had deuces, he could have eights. After a few painful minutes for myself, my opponent finally decides to fold. Nice. At three this week, we're sticking at the Hustler and we're back with Ethan in a $50, $100 cash game. And I don't know. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I'm first to act with Ace Eight of Clubs and I put in a raise to $600. Nick, who just sat down recently, makes the call to my left. I've played with him a bunch the day before on and after stream, so he was a lot of fun and everyone else folds. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of Queen Six Deuce to Spades. Sitting with Ace High, I think I can go either way with a check or bets and you know I like putting money in the middle. So I bet out $500 and Nick makes the call. So not feeling great about it. Don't think Ace High could be really good. But when the turn is the deuce of spades, I don't have a spade in my hand and I slow down with a check out of position. Nick now decides to fire out $1,000. And here in hindsight, I think my call is pretty bad and quite the punt. I'm just a non-believer in real time. But if I'm really going to call with Ace High, I should at least give myself a chance by having a spade in my hand to fall back on. But anyways, I'm thinking, make the call for a thousand. Maybe a side can be good. Maybe I can buff some rivers. Who knows? I make the call and the river is now another deuce. Trips on the board. So full houses are very prevalent. And I think full houses are a huge part of my range, whether it be big pocket pairs or small pocket pairs. But so does Nick. When I check it over to him and he massively overbets the pot to 7,000. And facing this bet, I think I've got some pretty bad intentions starting to creep into my head. As played preflop, I should have all the stronger hands in my range. Theoretically, I am the only person that's supposed to be able to have pocket queens, pocket kings, and aces, which would essentially be the nuts. So this $7,000 bet screams like a queen to me, and it seems like he's trying to get some value and sitting with ace high here. This might be a suicide bluff to attempt, but I really want to pull the trigger as Nick only has like 14 to 15,000 behind in his stack. And if I'm trying to convince him to fold what I think he has as a full house with a queen, me raising here is a hugely under bluff spot. And like I said, a little bit suicidal. So I think about this for about the 30 seconds I have to act and fuck it. I'm going to commit his stack in the middle and immediately Nick isn't happy and thinks that I have pocket queens, which seems a little weird in my head to say because if he has a queen, then there's only one combo of pocket queens. So Nick starts thinking for a long time and my heart is racing. Let's listen to his thinking process and audio. I was hoping he was gonna call and then I was gonna say good call and let him turn over a queen and then turn over kings. It's pretty disgusting right there. I mean, I guess I just give you the money, right? I guess I'll have to sell my car to rebuy. That's a tricky one, but yeah, probably one you should do. Wow. That's really rare. My king, king, my rampage. That's a full house. What the fuck? I don't think I've ever folded a full house in my entire life. It's just a bluff catcher at this point, though. Actually, it's my watch money, so I kind of want to think about it for 40 more seconds. I think you got it, but I'm gonna think about it for another 19 seconds. With 10 seconds left to act before Nick has to call or fold, he flashes me his cards, oh my God, and confirms he has pocket kings. And in the moment here, what the hell do I do? Do I look? Do I not look? Not sure what the best course of action is to get him to fold, but I decide on just flashing my eyes over and look and try to be as stone cold as possible. 
I let the 10 seconds pass, and he folds. Wow. Oh, show him the bluff. <laughs> show him the bluff. Show me a show him the bluff. Me on tilt. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course, I have to show the bluff when he asks me to, and... I just have no idea what to think after he folds. This was such a sick one to get through. A little bit crazy or a lot of bit crazy. Just feels like I got away with murder here on this one and definitely should have lost 25000 in this hand. <laughs> They're going to love that. that on that's the bluff of the year. Oh my that's the bluff of the year. Oh you said kings. I was just like, that's fucking full of shit. Number two this week. Guess what? We're staying at the Hustler. And we're switching players once again back to Mariano. He's playing in that 25-50 game. And if you're Mariano's opponent in this hand, what's your play on the river? Moving on to the next hand, there's an open from early position for $200. And I choose to re-raise with King-9 of spades in position. Everyone else folds and it gets back to the initial raiser. He thinks it over for a while and eventually decides $700 is not enough and bumps it up to 1800 Action's back to me now, and at this point, I think it's fairly obvious we're up against a big hand, but considering that my opponent has plenty of money left behind, and we're in position, I choose to make an ambitious call. With nearly $4,000 already in the middle, we go to a flop of Jack-8-4 with two spades. Oh boy. He continues with a bet of 2500 and I make the call. The turn is the ace of hearts, bringing in a second flush draw. My opponent seems unfazed though, because he keeps betting, this time $3,300. I don't think a raise makes much sense, so I call once again, and we're off to see one last card, which sadly brings no help, but it's actually a decent card, especially once he checks it over to me. Obviously, I have nothing with only king high, but I could certainly have some stuff on this board like king 10 of spades, 10 nine of spades, Pocket jacks, pocket eights, pocket aces, you get the idea. Of course, with all those hands, I would be going all in, so I think we only have one play here. Is it all in time for Mariano? It is. This would be a great call if Slim can make it. It's a very well played hand by Mariano. He just got caught bluffing. Sleem's probably thinking, would he do it twice in a row? The answer is yes. This is the thing with these guys. Candy paid it off. Mariano had a boat. Sleem's probably gonna fold. And Mariano wins with King High. This is a really tough spot. I don't blame him for folding. Give me a thousand white out of here. Sure, Play of the night right there. Thankfully, this one works out and we keep things going on the right track. And number one, taking us out of California, we are at the Lodge in Austin, Texas, where Brad Owen is playing in that massive $100, $200 cash game. And yes. Do not adjust your screens. This is a $60,000 pot. The third hand dealt, I pick up ace three suited under the gun plus one, I raise the 600. This is it, we're going to battle. It's gonna be interesting here because this has gotta be one of the largest games that Brad's ever played in, I would say. Oh yeah. Yes. So if not the largest. It is. Yeah, if not the largest and he's gonna play a hand here. I saw that Boots called with King Ten of Hearts, it's not up there, but he, he raised the 600, Brad did, and um, Boots called, and he's going to get some action here from Hook 2 with Block 8, so right off the bat, it looks like uh, Doug Polk getting a price, going to come in there with the 5 do suited, so four ways. <laughs> Frank gives us a flop. Oh, how about an 8 in the door, and look at this, Brad has the nut flush draw, Ooh. so this is going to be a big, big pot, or could be. We've got the nut flush draw and one over and a four-way pot on a board that will theoretically be way better for my range than anyone else since I open from early position and there are two Broadway cards. Doug checks with his complete air. I consider checking, but since this is so good for me as the under-the-gun plus one preflop raiser, I bet 2200 is a semi-bluff. 
I don't anticipate getting raised because none of my opponents will ever have a set of kings or queens. The absolute best hand that anyone will have is a set of eights, and the only two pair combination that makes sense for the opponents other than Doug is king-queen. If anyone calls my bet, it'll just build the pot in case I make the nuts, but I expect my opponents to fold pretty often. That won't be happening. The middle position opponent whose cards aren't up on the screen calls with king-10 of hearts. He has top pair and isn't close to being my main concern. The button flopped bottom set. It's the hand that I said would be the absolute best that any of my opponents could have. It's one of only two holdings that I anticipate the button will raise me with for value. Hook makes it 11,000 to go. Doug folds in the big blind. If I call for 9,000 more, the pot will be 27,000 and I'll have 18,000 left in my stack. I'll be completely pot committed and won't really be able to fold to a turn shove, getting almost three to one on a call at that point. Since there are so few value hands that my opponent will have, and his range is capped at pocket eights, whereas I can have all the sets and two pair hands, I think that there's some chance that I could even be best. Hook is definitely capable of raising with some kind of worse draw. He's one of those guys who played for hours before the stream. During that time, he got into a hand with my friend Mike Delvecchio when Hook 5-bet shoved ace-jack offsuit preflop for 70,000 effective. Hook is a wild guy who can sometimes play with reckless abandonment. I can't see myself folding the nut flush draw on a flop against his opponent, and I won't be folding on the turn either. It's much better to get my money in now. I rip it to hopefully catch Hook making a move. Perhaps I can win this without seeing another card come out, but worst case scenario, I'll have two shots of hitting a diamond if I get called. The middle position player snap folds his pair of kings. Hook doesn't even snap call with his set. He's never folding a set for 18,000 more though. He makes the call, which I'm not thrilled to see, but I've missed a lot of draws and all-ins on previous streams this week. I'm kind of feeling like I'm due. Brad just snap how, how gets it in here with ace three of diamonds. This is happening in about under seven seconds. Wow, he's going to be about a three to one dog here against the set. How many times are we running it, boys? In every single all-in situation this week on stream, I've run it once for max pain, including several pots for 20,000 or more. So guess what we'll be doing here? Right. They're going twice. So about twice. Six, well, over 60 grand because Brad started with 30. Ugh. Plus plus the dead money out there. So they're going to go twice here, boys. Brad looking for a diamond. A non-board pairing diamond. <laughs> Doug says, what's happened for blood? Last time Brad wanted to go one time blood for the stream. But this time we're going twice. Can't well, blame him. If Brad can escape and win one here, that's going to be a good result for him. Yeah. We're going twice. This is three hands into a nosebleed game with a pot two times bigger than any pot I've ever been involved in. The risk for me is already at an all-time high. No need to make things any wilder than they are when I'm shot taking. I've got about a 50% chance of chopping this. If I can somehow win both runouts, I'll be up over 30,000. The first turn is the ace of hearts giving me a meaningless pair. The only significance is that had I just flatted the flop raise, there's no sliver of a doubt that I would have called a turn shove. Over $30,000 of this pot is going to be determined by the next card. The river is the four of spades. We brick, and I'm both somewhat deflated by the outcome and also happy that I chose to run it twice, so I have a second chance for at least getting my money back. Only one other player folded the diamond preflop, which is why the four of diamonds is grayed out in the top right. The second turn is the ten of spades. It gives me a gut shot straight draw. I have one last chance at hitting, or I'll be stuck more than I've ever been stuck in my life. There's tons of tension at the table. I'm sure that the viewers of the stream are on the edge of their seats, so we're about to be extremely relieved or devastated. I kid you not, at this exact moment, the stream cuts out. Here's what the viewers saw. But the tone has been set, ladies and gentlemen. If you are here early, you've been rewarded. I'd love to tell you that the second river was a diamond and we chopped, but it was a brick, and I'm only able to keep my chips because I'm in the process of buying them back from Hook. Ugh. What a time for the live feed to cut out. I doubt there's many of us that would feel comfortable putting $30,000 on the line in a cash game. It's worth watching the rest of Brad's video to see what happened next. Well, that's it, folks. Week 13 is done. That's our 10 of the best. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate the support. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And all of the links to the original content are in the description box below. Until next week, good luck of the felt.